curly arrow mechanisms can be quite tricky at the best of times, but what's becoming even more popular in some exams, particularly on the OCRA specification, is asking you to predict curly arrows in an unfamiliar mechanism. In this video tutorial, I'm going to take you through this particular exam question from a unified chemistry paper on OCRA, and I'm going to demonstrate how we could predict the movement of curly arrows in an unfamiliar context. I'm not going to be using dipoles in this because you weren't given any by the question, although you are given charges. And I want to answer this and I want to demonstrate how we could conclude an answer without having to use them since you weren't given them. I'm also not just going to add them in for the sake of it because, again, you wouldn't necessarily know for certain what they would look like in the exam. And so I want to approach the question just like you would have to, and that's focusing on the curly arrows using just the pre-existing bonds, new bonds, and full charges. So let's stick to what we have in front of us. I've also included just at the bottom down here a little snippet from the OCR specification explaining what it expects from you in terms of knowledge of curly arrows. So you may wish to check this out. This is in section 4.1.1 of the specification or just try and zoom in on what I've snippeted for you here. But it's just so you're aware of where this comes up on the specification so you can plan ahead in future for this kind of context. For this particular exam question, and again, it was on a unified chemistry paper, and it is worth pointing out that it was the final question in the paper. I'll drop a link to it in the video description. We're being asked to add curly arrows to show the mechanism for this reaction. When we're comparing two boxes together here, we literally want to, as we add the curly arrows, see our two boxes, so two boxes at a time all the way through this. We want to see them as the before and the after each time. So we don't want to get distracted with everything else that's going on. When we're adding in the curly arrows, we want to look at two boxes at a time and have a before and an after. And what we're looking for are changes and other information perhaps given by the question. For example, here, we are told that the hydroxide ion, which is just down here, is acting as a nucleophile. And we know that a nucleophile is, by definition, an electron pair donor. And so that nucleophile, particularly its lone pair, is going to be the starting point of a curly arrow. Where's the curly arrow going to go? Well, let's consult our before and after. So if we look at the product side here, we've got a new bond being formed between the sulfur and what looks to have been the hydroxide ion before. So using my curly arrow, starting from the lone pair of my nucleophile, I'm going to go up here like so, and I'm going to go straight up right in the face of the sulfur. And that's because I can see from the after box that the oxygen is now bonded to the sulfur, and the way it would have done that is by the use of the lone pair, since we are told the hydroxide ion is acting as a nucleophile. But what else? What else is changing? Well, let's have another look. At the after, we also have this particular section of our molecule, which is a bit different. We can see over here on the left, it is quite different, just there. What's happening here is very, very similar, and we've already given a bit of a clue towards that. It's very, very similar to what happens in nucleophilic addition on the OCR specification. The next curly arrow I need to show here is going to bear a very close resemblance to that, because I'm going to go from the bond here up and on top to the oxygen like so. And the clue I had for that is the fact that the oxygen up here has got a demonstrated lone pair. We would have more than one, but still. And it's now got, most importantly, a negative charge. And that negative charge is suggesting how that curly arrow should have moved. And like I said, it does look a lot like nucleophilic addition. So in this next stage here, what I've done is got rid of all my annotations because I don't want to get distracted by them. And what I'm focusing on is just this before and after comparison here. I don't want to be distracted with everything I did over at the start of this. I'm not looking at the next part of the question. I am concentrating on these two boxes now for my new before and after. And I'm going to decide how the changes have taken place by adding in some curly arrows. So the first thing I need to do is look for what's changed. And I can see here in the after box, I've now got this second structure alongside the original organic molecule. So where's that come from? Well, it would appear that it's come from here. We can see that the sulfur was originally bonded to the oxygen, which now down here 
has got a demonstrated lone pair and a negative charge. Those are clues. The fact that that lone pair is being shown now is giving me a clue that the negative charge as well, that the bond between the sulfur and the oxygen was broken in such a way that it requires a curly arrow. So what I'm going to do is consider this almost a bit like nucleophilic substitution. In fact, if anything, I would say that this mechanism, from what I can see here, is bearing a very close resemblance to nucleophilic addition elimination, which actually isn't on the OCRA specification, but it is on the AQA specification. Now, what would happen here then, if I'm going to link it to something on the OCR spec, it would be nucleophilic substitution. I'm going to break this bond here using my curly arrow, and I'm going to push the electrons there onto that oxygen. So the electron pair movement is going from the bond onto the oxygen, and that explains why it's got the negative charge and this lone pair demonstrated in the bottom just there. What else is changing? Well, let's have a closer look at the end product, and we can see here that this group looks to have come from this section of the molecule that, to be fair, we did make in the first stage. It looks like it's almost gone back to how it was before because I've no longer got the negative charge on the oxygen and the lone pair isn't being demonstrated now. There must be something to do with that lone pair as well because whenever we're going to get a lone pair in this based on the specification section just here with some clues and information, I'm going to be using a curly arrow. So what do I need to do here? And again, this is... This is honestly what makes me think this is the closest thing to nucleophilic addition elimination I can see. Here, what I'm going to do now is move this pair of electrons right here in between the two atoms, and I'm going to create this double bond feature that we see in the after box down there. Finally, now here we're at the end of the question, and once again, I'm only concentrating on a box where some curly arrows are going and a stage at the end. So here I'm just concentrating on my before and after. I don't want to involve myself in the whole rest of the question at this point. I need to concentrate section at a time here, just this before and just the after. So let's have a look at what's changed this time. Well, we can see here we've got a slight modification to the second structure. It's picked up a proton. So the difference between the two highlighted yellow sections here is the fact that the latter, the one at the bottom in the after section, has picked up a proton. So where could it have picked it up from? Well, if we look at the larger structure of the two in the box, we can see that the difference it's got between that and the after version of itself is the fact that it has deprotonated, so the oxygen there has got a negative charge now on it. And so this looks like it could be quite simple with perhaps just one curly arrow being added in. The lone pair in the before box is a massive clue of what needs to happen because we know that a curly arrow from the specification shows the movement of an electron pair. And we know that this oxygen is going to pick up, because we can see it in the product down here, a proton. And so what I'm going to do is use a curly arrow to pick up this proton just there like so. And we could consider ourselves to be finished at this stage but not quite, because what we haven't done is explained why the oxygen in the after section on this larger organic molecule just here, why does that oxygen have a negative charge? Well, these electrons from this bond to the hydrogen have to go somewhere, and they go here onto the oxygen like so to explain that final product. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like a tutorial on how I recommend you revise organic chemistry, or perhaps a full walkthrough of a spectroscopy question in the second year of the course, click the links on screen now to be taken straight to that kind of content. Until next time though, happy revising.